Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, today folks, what we are going to do is have a look at this hideous, hideous Chinese, well, so-called safe. It's not a safe in any sense of the word, but um, we're going to have a look at this cheap Chinese safe and just show you how it works. Now, um, I've got to say, this is going to be an object lesson in why uh, why friends don't let friends buy this sort of rubbish basically it's it's just junk so um, just very briefly looking at the outside of the uh, of the box um, what we have got here is one combination dial and one key now the way that this works is that you need to know both the combination and you need to have the key as well what you then do is dial the combination to the safe satisfaction, um, put the key in, rotate the key and that then withdraws the bolt. Now uh, if you saw my earlier video on this you saw that, um, that the safe was um, wrecked basically by the guy that I bought it off and none of this was working so what I've done is put it back together again. Um, I have removed all the pins on that lock though so now that is just nothing basically but a handle so um, there are no pins in there and we can just wobble that thing around pretty much as much as we like and uh, just to show you how that works um, I have got the combination dialed there already um, and if I use the key what that does is uses this cam to push the bolt back like that so um, this tailpiece here goes into the wheel pack once the numbers are all aligned and away you go and very obviously you can see if it's not aligned then the thing won't go in okay all right so having got that out of the way um, let's see in fact how this thing actually works. Okay, so let's see how this works. Um, we are dialing everything to the left at the moment and you can see that all of the wheels, so the three code wheels and the uh, drive wheel here are all going round. Now, uh, let's go round and stop wheel one where it needs to be so that you can now see that the gate on wheel one is aligned with the tailpiece. Now let's go the other way and what will happen first is the drive wheel does a revolution all by itself then it picks up wheel 3, you'll see how that works shortly then after a while wheel 3 picks up wheel 2 and we can now align that gate now we go back the other way and of course it's repeated all over again. So we get one revolution of the drive wheel by itself. Now we've got wheel three moving as well. Let's bring that round into position. And now what we've got to do is take the drive wheel back to where it needs to go. Here we go and we've got everything lined up. And of course at this point we can uh, open the safe. now. The first thing that you notice is that the tolerances are actually not that great. So um, I think the number for um, this last wheel is supposed to be 75. But you can see that there's an awful lot of movement there. And in actual fact, if I just show you that from the front, um, you will discover that anything from anything between 75 and 80 basically is is going to do the job so um, massively sloppy tolerances eh? just you know just rubbish basically okay next thing let's have a look in and see just exactly how that mechanism operates so uh, you can see that we've got um, these wheels held in place um, there's there's just a split pin going through this thing um, now I'm just going to prop that up on there so that you guys get a better look okay we have got the split pin holding that in place so we just take that split pin out and then we've now got the drive wheel which is just threaded on okay so let's undo that Mm. 
like so. And what we notice for a start is that um, we have got a little a little screw in knobble, let's call it. This this is actually the drive pin. This is the thing that drives the next wheel down. So um, there is a spacer there as well. The idea of that washer is to um, hopefully isolate the wheels. But you saw on this lock that um, when wheel two moves, it also moves wheel one a little bit as well. So clearly these washers don't actually work terribly well. Um, so out comes that washer. Um, here is the little driven pin on wheel three. And of course you can see how this works. Um, this comes around, we've got the little drive pin there and it impacts on that and starts to turn it and so on down through the lock. So here's wheel three coming off, here's the washer, wheel two is exactly the same and uh, you don't need to be a genius to work out that wheel one has the same arrangement as well. So um, you'll, you'll notice a few interesting things here guys. First of all, you will notice um, not only are the gates massive, I mean the, you know, look at the, the tailpiece and look at the size of the gate, right? So not only are the, the gates massive, but um, you'll see that there's actually no way of changing the combination here. So on this drive wheel, you could, if you really wanted to, um, move that pin round to another position and, and of course because the drive wheel is attached to the spindle it's going to change everything round a few degrees so it'll just have the same combination but move round the dial a little bit. Um, but as far as these other three wheels are concerned there is absolutely no way to change their number. So um, in some better quality locks in actual fact all of these wheels have a little screw change thing here so that you could in fact remove this and stick it somewhere else and thereby change the combination but in this particular lock each one of these wheels has these little pins simply pressed in so they ain't going anywhere they're there they're they to, they're the, they are there to stay and the other thing that you notice is that there's a hundred numbers on the dial right enough, but there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen positions that these little pins can go in. So the way that this is actually manufactured is it's just so cheap and nasty that it that it's incredible, okay? Um, they have manufactured 13 different wheels each with a pin in a different position. So there is a big stack of wheels sitting at the factory, all with the pin there, and then there's another pile with the pin there, and then there's another one with the pin there, and, and so on, okay? Then what they do is just pick three of those pretty much out of the hat, whack them in the safe, and that is the safe's combination, and there it stays. You cannot change it. It is what it is what it is. Now the other thing that you'll notice about that, um, in a decent quality safe, um, you've got 100 numbers to play with on each wheel. So you've got 100 times 100 times 100 equals a million different possible combinations. It's not quite that many, but it's, it's close to it. Um, now, on this thing, you've only got 13 numbers for each wheel, by God. So the actual number of combinations that you can make with this safe is simply 13 times 13 times 13 equals 2,197 numbers. So um, now that's not counting this thing here, right? That's not counting the drive wheel um, because frankly, um, uh, for reasons I'll show you in a second, you have to be a moron not to know what the number on this one is. Um, so even if you were gonna brute force this lock, okay? Even if you were gonna try, every single one of the possible combinations you've only got 2,000 that you've got to try and you could probably do that in an afternoon so um, if, if, with that said of course nobody is going to try and brute force this thing because in actual fact it's pretty bloody simple to ma manipulate 
And um, that brings me to my next thing. We need to talk about the one defense that this thing has against manipulation. Now, I'm just going to put it back together quickly. So um, bear with me, guys, while I uh, put this back together. Okay, so we've got this hideous thing reassembled. Now, um, here is the one defense against manipulation that this lock has, guys. Um, the whole reason that this drive wheel is here is so that you cannot ram the tailpiece into the wheel pack and find where the numbers are. Now, um, if you look closely, you will see that this wheel here, the drive wheel, is a very slightly larger diameter than these three code wheels. So what that means is that when you are pushing this tailpiece into the lock, it's not riding on the code wheels themselves, it's riding on that drive wheel. It's only when you come round and it drops in, click, you see that? Um, it is only at that point that it then rides on the wheel pack. Now, um, I'm, I am was going to say I'm not going to go through the principles of manipulation again here. Yeah, I might just, just very briefly. Um, all you've got to do to manipulate this thing is figure out where, what positions on the dial this tailpiece moves deeper into the wheel pack. So, for example, it might move this far with the... Uh, dial at 70 or 70 something which is where it is at the moment um, if we were to line up one gate okay so let's just see if we can line up the gate on wheel three okay now you can see that that goes a little bit deeper into the wheel pack so there's a little bit more movement now i, I won't I'll leave it to you guys to work out the rest of that, but um, I hope that you can see from that little demo that manipulating this thing is an absolute piece of cake. It, the, the lock just basically does it for you. Not only have you got very, very few choices of number to begin with, you've only got 13 possible numbers, um, but more than that, um, it, you, you get these huge movements and you, know, you can very easily figure out what's going on. So... That is how one of these Chinese wheels lock, uh, wheel locks works. Um, if we were giving it its proper name, we would call this a direct entry because this thing enters directly into the wheel pack. Um, screw change mechanism because we've got a, a little screw there. Um, but I don't think we're actually going to dignify it with that name because the only screw that we can actually change, the only number that we can change is the one on this drive wheel. So. Um, I'm not going to call it a proper screw change lock. Um, I'm just going to call it a piece of Chinese junk, basically, which is all that it is. So, there you go, folks. Um, I hope you have learned something there. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, from those things that I've told you about figuring out how far that bolt goes into the wheel pack, uh, I hope you've figured out how you would manipulate this lock. So, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate you um, coming on the journey with me learning this thing. My name's Michael Maynard, this is Gorilla Picking, and uh, that is a piece of Chinese rubbish.